You need a few minutes, right? Okay, see our mist right here? And one regular Pepsi too, you said? Who gets the diet? Right, right there. There you go. Tony, the bacon cheeseburger and the bacon cheeseburger deluxe? So one is with fries, one is just not even lettuce, tomatoes. Huh? Yeah. Okay, and the one after that is gonna be the veggie burger with the chili burger deluxe. The one after that is gonna be... Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then it's gonna be, so you know after that, it's gonna be two ham and cheese omelets and one Greek omelet, all with white toast and home fries. I started memorizing the infinite numbers of pi because Tony, when he was in eighth grade, the teacher wanted him to memorize 50 of them. So it's 0628628420678162803482579 that's the first 100 you want me to keep going i have what's called retinitis pigmentosa i've been blind for 49 years i'm okay with it 1000% but there was these anger feelings like, why I'm not gonna be the only one that doesn't drive a car. I have to rely always on people. When you're 18, 20 years old, you, you take it kind of like a little bit personally. The realization really hit me, okay, I can't see and I have to rely on people, but I'm independent. I'm walking around, I'm shampooing my own hair. I really have nothing to complain about. You want me to take anything off the table? You can take this, yes. Okay. Thank you. I have cookies and cream cake, uh, chocolate mousse cake, and chocolate fudge cake. Everybody got everything, right? Yes. I don't have the convenience of having a paper and pen and writing things down or a cell phone to store things in. My memory is my computer. See if you could get me a scoop of chocolate and vanilla ice cream. And then I'm gonna need you to give me two chocolate cakes. I'm gonna need two tuna melts for the other table and a toasted bagel with cream cheese. Two chicken cookies. And you want cheese or no cheese? Oh, um, yeah, cheese. I'll get a cream cook too. Okay. For the bacon well done. Okay, raw onion only. And coffee. Chili burger deluxe. So just you figure out how you wanna do this. It's, I need the omelets and the spaghetti with meat sauce out and I'm gonna start taking orders. Imagine you guys blindfolding yourselves and saying, okay, let me take care of six, seven different tables, remember all the orders, salad, and then at the end of it, when you go up ready to pay, okay, so a chili burger deluxe, a veggie burger deluxe, and two sodas, right? It comes out to $22. Here's your bill, it's $18.95, and I would never write anything down, and people say, hey, Tony, someone come over here. If he came to my tables and he didn't spill hot coffee and tea all over my head or my crotch or whatever, all right, I'm good with that. Does that say 25, sir? Just making sure, because it was 22. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. I get a kick out of exceeding every single person's expectations of what someone with a disability of my nature can do. I live with my three kids. That's Tony, Dimitri, and Michael. They're part Greek and their mom was born in Barbados. We were common law and then, you know, after six years, we just grew apart. My mom, she asked me who I'd rather be with. My dad doesn't really have anybody to take care of him, so it'd probably be best if I'd be with my dad and just help him out if, you know, you're going away. And so she respected my opinion and just said, okay. 
Okay, so he's doing okay. How about uh, reading 96, writing 80, math 95, math 85. Oh, you know, like when I was four, I was leading dad around the mall. I always knew. I'm like, food corpse right over there. <laughs> you got any test tomorrow, Mike? For who? Toy? You ready for it? I just need to study one thing else. You want to bring it uh, to the diner? Yep. Okay, come. Michael's like a gummy bears freak like me sometimes. Everybody's ready? Okay, come. Last person, shut the door. How was it being like a single dad? Was it tough? Well, yeah, there are of course challenges, but it makes you a better person. Now, I tell people, and I mean it when I say this, I go, I was born with two eyes that don't work, but I have six eyes that watch for me. Growing up, you didn't really think that your dad was different from any other dad. Like, you just thought, oh, everybody has to walk him around to cars and just lead him around places. My mom owns the diner. My father bought it originally, and she's owned it. Do they come with you um, when you work there? Yeah. Like every time? Not, not every time, but you know, a good majority of the time. You bring homework. Tony works. So Tony's already at 16 years old cooking. Middle school to high school is when the responsibility came. And it was still fun. New experiences, new people working here. Most people hate their teenage years, I'd say. It's pretty awesome. It started off freshman year that I had to take over as a cook. Oh, sorry. Hey, uh, Tony. The way I balance it out with school is I would bring either my homework on a busy day, and if there's any, say, a grace period for like an hour, I'd spend that time just doing, say, calculus. Sort of sounds like an adult, like you kind of had to grow up fast. Mini adult. <laughs> yeah. You tired, baby? For dad, I'm pretty much the right hand man. Hey, Tony. Do me a favor, Tony. Hey, Tony. Hey, Tony. Uh, Tony. Tony. Okay, um, Tony. His main person to go to if he has a problem with anything, whether it be technological, whether it be in here or at home. Hey, Tony, can you come in one second? I'm just gonna ask you something. Aren't there some Air Force gray ones that are just sitting around here that are gray and white? There's, I think, Air Force maybe in that bin that has all their shoes in the kitchen. Uh, no strap. Which ones are these? Yeah. You put it in silver and black? Yeah. Do they match more than what I'm wearing now? Yeah, they're closer. Sometimes it's just, say, Facebook chores, like see who called me in the morning, see did you get any texts or emails. But was it a phone call? Is it a phone call or a wait? And that's hyper positive. That's what it was. Hyper positive tag the camera. And probably his lookout when it comes to this place. I'll say, car pulled in, and then I'll say they went to third table side with the Pepsi machine. Hey, Tony. Uh-oh. <laughs> yep. Tony. Yep. This psycho killer wants to churn cheesecake with the cooked onions and all the fixing. Okay, um, yeah, sure. I'll be right back. I mean, I enjoy having a good work ethic, and it's a good skill I have. Turkey burger deluxe, fried calamari, chicken corn with french fries, the two tuna melts, toasted bagel, anything else? Pizza burger deluxe. Pizza burger deluxe. Tony, he's so bright, and from a young period of time, I was dictating, he was writing, so I think that's why he's become a pretty skilled writer. And he's also very good in math, like a straight-A student. My dad wanted me to really focus. He didn't want any future generations of Dukakis working in a diner. It was time to and that Greek tradition of the diners.
I went to Ithaca College. That's where I graduated from. I majored in psychology. I don't know, it just always interested me how I can outthink everybody. It started from an early age. I was a phone hacker, making free phone calls. I even got the nation's Capitol building's toll-free number, making it seem like it's coming from, you know, the Capitol building. I did travel around doing stand-up comedy. My first real passion in front of 200 strangers, can I make them relate to me? When someone comes from out of town and walks into New York, you walk up to someone in the street and you're like, excuse me, can you tell me how to get to Rockefeller Center? You want to get to Rockefeller fucking center that's on fucking 42nd fucking 5th. This is what you fucking do. Go down this fucking block, make a fucking right, not a fucking left, or you'll end up in that fucking gay bar. Cross that fucking street and you'll be a Rockefeller fucking center. Thank you, officer. <laughs> and the funny thing is, one time when my kids were small, I took them to one of my gigs. I have this routine of me in the driver's seat of a car. I'm saying, oh, I just ran over my seeing eye dog. Oh my gosh, he, he was in my blind spot. Tony's observation of what was going on, he goes, oh, people were laughing with you. They weren't laughing at you. Right before bedtime, he says, dad, and I go, yeah. He goes, you're fucking good. <laughs> I, I was always someone that wanted to collect clothes, shoes, cologne, shirts, pants, something new, something to look forward to putting on. My first thing that I ever collected was cologne. I f said it was the blind man's jewelry. Oh, you put this and you smell that, and once in a while I wear this with that, so I'd almost make my own blend. I would collect, I would try to buy one a month. I like Asian green tea from Creed. Polo Oud, Mr. Burberry, Carvin. I like one of the Pradas that I think it's called Infusion that they don't sell anymore. Uh, the most expensive is probably Royal Mayfair by Creed. It's probably about $500 a bottle. If I've held to a fragrance for a long time, I'll like, okay, I better start using it and put it in the fridge just to keep it fresh. Because it's known if it gets overheated and stuff like that, the molecules could possibly like change the fragrance. You wanna know what I've done actually? You're gonna laugh when I tell you this. I've made one or two friends that were strippers back a couple years back and when I was younger and I was older, and I'd take them shopping with me. And I'd be like, okay, you're gonna pick out these stuff for the blind guy. Then it got into always wanting to look good. So I collected a good amount of jeans through the years. Then it just, the shoe collection just went a little too out of hand, probably. Even managers and friends of these stores are like, you know, this blind guy has everything. Oh yeah, he's got that. And then people start naming, oh yeah, yeah, John's got that. And then they're almost like they're proud of me. I don't have vices, I don't drink, I don't do drugs. I just collect cologne, clothes, and shoes, you know? We got a lot more shoes now. Yeah, how many pairs? Ah, uh, now it's approaching like 700, mid 700. Wow. Like, it's, it's gotten to the point where it's actually hard to squeeze around in the attic. This is my attic infested with shoes. Nikes, Adidas, and Reeboks. Here we go. Okay, these are LeBron. Are they 616750? Is the style number? See if it's 616750. Uh, uh, oh, you know what these are? I think these are the All Star LeBrons. Uh, yeah. LeBron 10 All Stars. LeBron 11s. SB Dunks Waffle Premium. All right, these are a six retro Jordan. These are the Phone Posit Galaxies. Air Force One Premium. You want to have some sort of organization where you know, I've memorized the colors on the boxes, style numbers, and all sorts of things just so it makes it easier for me to tell Tony, okay, it has this color description and so forth and so on. Okay. Champagne sixes, cigar sixes. Okay, these are the Air Maxes 2009. I have one that's all navy, a royal pair. I have, um, Positive, I have one other color of these. Um, green pair. 
KD8 and 7. KD8 and 7. Yeah. Jordan 2 Q54, Jordan 13, Nike Foam Posits with the Nike check, Air Max Griffey Furies, Kyrie 2 Christmas Edition, Adidas 750 Boost Black, Jordan 1 Pinnacles for Shadow Tan, Giuseppe Zanotti's Crocodile Print Off White. Ah, smell the leather on these things. When you wear these to school, Tony, I'm probably gonna have you walk with a different pair and then just put these on like, in, and when you get out of school, put them back in the box in the locker. You know what I'm saying? I applied to six out of the eight Ivy Leagues. So Princeton, Yale, Columbia, UPenn, and I think Cornell, yeah. Believe it or not, like Harvard was really probably the quickest of all the applications. I mostly talked about my time acclimating to the diner. I attribute some of my excess to a triple decker sandwich. It's hard to put it together and cut it without it completely falling apart on you. So one day I decided, let me just rearrange things. Like maybe instead of lettuce before tomatoes, tomatoes before lettuce, maybe it'll make it more structurally sound. And it worked out for me. March 28th, so that was the day. There was nobody really else around in the diner. I went over to my email, checked it, said there was an update. Our admissions committee considers each application with great care, voting to admit those who will make the best use of the opportunities at Harvard. We admire all you have accomplished and we believe that Harvard is a particularly good match for your talents and interests. I only said two words and uh, they're not exactly appropriate. Isn't it unbelievable? So he just dashed over to the phone, the diner phone, and started calling everybody he knew from like everywhere. Behold, <laughs> Lion King. Right here. Huck? Yeah, the little, little art. How do you think it's going to be for your dad after you leave? He's going to be talking about you. Initially, he was worried. His main fear was whether or not my brother was going to step it up. Dimitri. When I told him that he's going to need to be able to adjust to me being gone, he really took it to heart and started to step it up. Dimitri's gotten a lot better. Is that right? Yes, he's becoming the new awesome cook. Yeah, the new Tony. Yes. The swan goes to the college, the shoes are inherited by the younger brother. Is that right? You're gonna give him your shoes? Pretty much. I mean, I'm probably, I can't take 700 to college. No, no, of course. <laughs> Nothing is permanent. They're gonna go on, become young adults, have careers, families, and stuff like that. So as human beings, we try to um, take a situation where some people might think is so uncomfortable and make the best of it, and that's what you know every human being should do. Oh yeah, sure.